Hello everyone, the Lord be with you and also with you. When I looked at the readings that are set for today, I thought I might just as well repeat Friday's midday prayer because so much of what I spoke about then comes through. It's much the same, but of course it is. It's Advent hope. But anyway, the readings are different and the Old Testament reading from Isaiah just can't be missed. It's a beautiful, wonderful, joyous reading. So I think I must just get on and read it to you. It's Isaiah 35, reading verses 1 to 10. The desert and the parched land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it will burst into bloom. It will rejoice greatly and shout for joy. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it, the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the feeble hands, steady the knees that give way. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong, do not fear. Your God will come. He will come with vengeance, with divine retribution. He will come to save you. Then the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the lame leap like a deer and the mute tongue shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand will become a pool, the thirsty ground bubbling springs. In the haunts where jackals once lay, grass and reeds and papyrus will grow. And a highway will be there. It will be called the way of holiness. The unclean will not journey on it. It will be for those who walk in that way. Wicked fools will not go about on it. No lion will be there, nor will any ferocious beast get up on it. They will not be found there. But only the redeemed will walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them. And sorrow and sighing will flee away. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Isn't that <clears throat> stunning? It totally lifts my spirits. Think of our world today as a desert as a parched land. People worldwide struggling to survive as COVID-19 has wiped literally billions of rands, pounds, dollars, euros, yen, and everything else off the world's economy. Think of the loneliness many people have had to endure as they were locked down and cut off from their loved ones. The fear of catching the virus that many of the most vulnerable felt and are still feeling. The desolation and the seeming leap failure of leadership around the world to contain the pandemic. We have been in the wilderness. We have experienced it and we are still experiencing it. And of course, many people live in their own personal wildernesses apart from COVID their own places of desolation and grief, illness, depression. The Israelites had their own experience of the wilderness. For them, it was a place of flight as they escaped from Egypt. And in Deuteronomy 8, we learn that there were venomous snakes and scorpions there. In Exodus, we find them grumbling because there was no water. They couldn't grow crops and there was no food. They wandered around for years, seemingly lost. Psalm 107 encapsulates that time, and I quote from it. Some wandered in desert wastelands, finding no way to a city where they could settle. They were hungry and thirsty, and their lives ebbed away. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. And those last few words, that last sentence, is key. They cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. The desert was a forbidding wilderness for the Israelites, but there they learned to trust 
their God. When they called on him, he rescued them. He rescued them from their bondage in Egypt. He provided water for them. Remember how he told Moses to strike the rock. He provided food for them in the form of manna and quail. He provided a pillar of cloud by day and fire by night to lead them. He was always with them. They weren't always obedient. Remember the golden calf. And they had to spend a long time wandering in the wilderness before they came to trust God. But eventually he took them to the promised land. And God's promise is every bit as true for us today. He will bring us out of the wilderness. He will restore us and give us hope. We just need to be faithful and obedient. Follow him, walking in his way. I want to read those first few verses again from the message, just to remind you how glorious our God is. Wilderness and desert will sing joyously. The badlands will celebrate and flower. Like the crocus in spring, bursting into blossom, a symphony of song and colour. Mountain glories of Lebanon, a gift. Awesome Carmel, stunning Sharon, gifts. God's resplendent glory, fully on display. God awesome, God majestic. Surely we can also rejoice and have hope. Isaiah goes on to speak directly to us. He tells us that we have hands that have grown weak, soft from disuse. They can hold nothing and no longer do the work they were made for. And he says, strengthen them, make them strong again. He tells us that our knees are weak, causing us to stagger and stumble. We can't walk properly with knees like that. He says, make them firm. He speaks of people whose hearts and minds are gripped by fear and anxiety. Isaiah says, be strong, do not fear. How can we be strong and fearless if we are stuck in a wasteland? We can, because God is our source of strength and our salvation. God will bring us healing and restoration, restoring our strength. Our healing will be physical and spiritual. There's that reference again to blind eyes being opened and deaf ears hearing again. Something we come across so much in the healing, restorative ministry of Jesus. So let's turn now to the gospel reading where we find Jesus healing again. Let's listen to the good news proclaimed in Luke's Gospel, chapter 5, reading verses 17 to 27. Glory to Christ our Saviour. <clears throat> some men carrying a paralytic on a mat, some men came, sorry, carrying a paralytic on a mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. <clears throat> when they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd, right in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, Who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, take your mat and go home. Immediately he stood up in front of them, took what he had been lying on, went home, praising God. 
Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, we have seen remarkable things today. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. What strikes me most about this passage is the faith of the paralyzed man's friends. And that is what Jesus commends. We need to have faith in the Lord. Faith that he will heal us, look after us and bring us out of our wilderness places, restore us and make us whole. As we come to him in faith, we can thank him for the blessings he so lovingly bestows on us and we can be sure that we can look forward to the future with hope. So let us pray. Thank you, Lord, that we know that you are with us. We come to you in faithful obedience, holding firm to your promise to heal and restore us. May all the desert places in this country where we find poverty, crime, abuse, sickness be restored. May we see water gushing forth in our wilderness. May we turn as a people to you, Lord, strengthened to do your work, walking in your way. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. <clears throat> Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So let's share the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and always. Amen. We pray the prayer for Africa. God bless Africa, protect our women and children, transform our leaders, heal our communities, restore our dignity and give us peace for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, all whom you love and for whom you pray, now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Lots of love to you. Good, goodbye now and stay safe. Blessed be your name and the land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Ever blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name.